Hello there, Mr. Sutton with the final lesson on volume and surface area. In this one, we're tackling volume of pyramids, cones, and spheres. And for our real life application, we'll see how much ice cream a cone can hold. Let's begin with the formula for the volume of a pyramid. So if you have a base area of B and a height of the pyramid, we'll call that H, uh, this is the absolute height of the pyramid, not the slant height, then you can figure out the volume by doing one third times the base area times the height. Now if you have a square pyramid where you have a base of s squared, then that's just going to be one-third s squared height. And that's actually the formula on the MCAS, but you can do a more general area formula for the base if you want any kind of pyramid. So here's a pyramid for you to find the volume of, and you might be thinking, wait, this is a little bit weird. I mean, this pyramid is kind of off-center. Go ahead and try anyway. So we're going to use our general formula, one-third base area times height. It works even if you have an oblique pyramid that's off-center here. So we have to find B first. Um, now that's just a rectangle, so we just have 7 times 6, length times width for that one. Base area then of 42. So we need one-third times base area 42 times the height of 9. Well, a third of 9 is 3. 3 times 42, that's going to be 126, and that'll be cubic inches. For this next problem, they're giving us the volume, and they want us to figure out the value of x here. Pause the video and try it out. All right, so for this one, we can actually use that uh, specific formula, 1 third s squared h. You could still use base area, but same thing. So we know that the volume is 80. We have height of x, that's going to be h, and then s is just going to be 4. So we've got 1 third 16 times x equals 80. To make my life a little easier, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 to get rid of that 1 third. So I can say 240 equals 16 times x. And let's see, what's 240 divided by x? Well, that's just going to be 15. Uh, so that's going to be 15, and that'll be inches for this one. For this next one, we've got a real-life problem. An ice cream cone has the dimensions shown in the figure below. To the nearest tenth, how much ice cream will fit in it? Um, so this is definitely a volume problem. Now, what's the volume of a cone going to be? Well, it's kind of like a pyramid with a circular base. So instead of doing one-third base area times height, we can do one-third pi r squared times height. Pause the video and see if you can get the volume out of this. All right, so let's see what you plugged in here. For r, we've got 4. For h, we've got 6. Pretty straightforward on this one. So we've got 1 third times 16 times 6. That's going to be like a 2 times 16, so 32 pi. And plugging that in the calculator, I come up with 100.5, and that's going to be cubic centimeters. On this next one, we're going to find the volume of a sphere whose radius is 6 feet. Um, now I'll just give you the sphere volume formula for now. We'll prove it at the end of the video if you want to check it out. Um, for now, it's going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. So go ahead and plug that in. So we've got 4 thirds pi times 6 cubed. And just careful as you do this. So 4 divided by 3, you need a parenthesis for that. Pi 6 cubed comes out to 904.78 or 0.8, depending on how you're rounding this. And that's going to be cubic feet. This next problem is kind of interesting. We're given this cube with a cone kind of hollowed out of it and we want to find the volume of the remaining shape. Pause the video and see if you can give this one a whirl. So you need to find two volumes in this one. First, we need the volume of the cube. That's just going to be s cubed. s is going to be 6, so 6 cubed gives us 216. Then we need the volume of the cone. The cone, again, that's going to be 1 third pi r squared h. r in this case is going to be 2. And then h is going to be 6. So plugging all that in, we're going to end up with about 25.13. Now, what do we have to do with these two volumes? Well, we took this cone out of the cube. Um, so that means we're going to have to subtract. And that gives us about 190.87. And that's going to be cubic millimeters. 
for our wrap-up here, we're going to go ahead and actually prove that sphere volume formula, which must look kind of weird. I mean, four-thirds, that's kind of a random number. So let's say that we're going to fill a sphere with a bunch of little pyramids, so that the height of each of these pyramids is the radius. So each of these pyramids is starting in the center and expanding out to touch the surface of the sphere. And here's a few more, and you get the picture. Um, all of these, again, have an absolute height of r because they're going from the center of the sphere to the outside. So the volume of a pyramid in general, again, that's one-third base area times height. And the height we just said of these pyramids is the radius. But now the base of all those pyramids is the sphere's surface area. The whole surface area of the sphere is accounting for all the bases of all these many pyramids. So instead of writing one-third base area, times r, we could write one-third, what's the base area, of, what's the area of a sphere again? Oh yeah, 4 pi r squared times r. So multiplying all this together, we've got 4 over 3 pi r to the third power. And that concludes our final volume on solids. Until next time, this is Mr. Sutton signing off.